Hey everybody, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. Today, we take another revisited look at one of my old Academy tutorials. Now, this one was billed Salt Wash Verdigris. Now, the salt wash part of it is a product. This is a texturizing additive to add to any of your paints. And the verdigris is all about the patina. Now, this is the sample board that I did prior to filming the tutorial, and I absolutely love the colorway on this. It's kind of um, the look of the Statue of Liberty. It's bronze or copper that has the patina as aged with the weather. If you fancy using this look, you could use it over a plant pot or a bust, anything like that. It would work over many different items and look really, really gorgeous. So let's take a look at the tutorial. Today I'm going to be working on this beautiful plastic Grecian urn that I picked up from a local garden centre in the clearance section. Well actually I picked up two. So we're going to work this treatment over the two plastic containers. Now using the verdigris look I would always try and choose something that kind of already appears or alludes to being the shape of metal. Now that could be anything from a concrete bust that you want to change into something that looks like bronze or copper. Um, just think out of the box and you're halfway there. So we're gonna mix up some Annie Sloan on fleur and graphite with salt wash and we need to put a prime coat onto this. So it's gonna be a watered down version of salt wash. This will help all the other layers of paint and salt wash adhere to the plastic really well. So all we're gonna use is we've got the salt wash here. I'm gonna, the, I've got this lovely measuring cup, but I don't measure anything. So um, I'm just gonna show you how I do it. I'm gonna take some paint. I'm gonna go probably about half and half on fleur. We don't need too much of this. That's the on fleur. And a little bit of graphite. So we're gonna make sort of a bronzy color. This is the color that I want to be at the base of this. And we'll use a little bit of salt wash. So I'm gonna put probably half a scoop of salt wash. If we can get into the tin, that's it. So half a scoop, salt wash into there. And I've got my salt wa wash mixy stick. And we need some, oh, we've got some water here. So probably the same amount of water as paint, salt wash. We just really need a runny version, but we've put the salt wash in there just to help the next layer adhere to the plastic. So as you can see, look, if I hold that up, it's quite, it's quite trickly, quite runny. So I'm happy with that. We may need to add more water because the salt wash does thicken up. That's what it's made for. So if it, if it thickens up too much, I will add more water. I'm gonna take this out of the way. That's that. And the water, and all we're gonna do is literally, it feels good. Yeah. And we're just gonna add some paint to the piece. Now, I, luckily for me, this piece has already got texture to it. It's inbuilt into this, so which is great for the piece, but we're gonna add more texture. And this will make sense when we do the verdigris finish to it. So adding texture to your piece, you could have a completely smooth piece. And we really want to add the salt wash to make those textures. I have got a little bit of scrap wood to, to the side, so I'm going to show you on that as well as the piece, because I don't think it's fair that I've already started with a textured piece anyway, so um, I'm going to show you on a piece of wood as we go along through the process. But as you can see, just cover the whole, the whole item, your plastic item, with this 
scrub coat like so and then we'll leave it to dry and then we'll prep for the next part which will be a thicker version of the same colour. So I'm not going to do the inside of the pot, I'm only going to do the outside. Um, I don't see there any point doing the inside because there's going to be soil inside there with some plants maybe. So make sure any what way with the brush and I'm just making sure I fill all of the detailed areas. That's about it. So nothing too perfect. We're just going to set this aside to dry. We'll leave it on there to dry for a moment and we'll pick up by a piece of wood. So I've put the urn to one side, it's drying, it's had a full coat and as I said to you before, we was going to work on a flat piece of wood. This, this is relatively flat, it's just a scrap piece of wood from the back of the workshop and we're going to do exactly the same thing to the urn as we're going to do to this so you can see it from a flat surface. Um, and all we're going to do is just give it again a scrub coat and then once these two pieces dry we will move on to adding texture with the salt wash. So that's all you need there. So if this was a piece of plastic it, with a smooth finish this is all you need to do. Scrub coat first and then we'll add the texture. I've had a tea break, it's taken about 10-15 minutes to dry, it's just about there and so all we're going to do is bring it back to the station and we're going to mix up our second batch of salt wash. Um, I'm going to use, there's a little bit left in the jar, I'm going to use that, it's thickened up as it's, as it's dried. So we're going to use the same pot, I'm going to do the same thing again, um, we're going to go with a little bit more paint this time. Um, about half of on fleur and half of graphite straight into the mix pot. Now I never measure anything. If any of you have seen me before, I never measure anything, but these cups are really great. They tell you all the different paints and how to measure out. So they're beautiful. Uh, Salt Wash have been really clever about putting the measurements on here. But if you like me and like fun, you just pour everything in and go for it. We're going to bring back the Salt Wash. And this time we're going to add more salt wash. We want a really thick, pasty um, consistency this time. So I'm going to do a scoop and a half to that. And I'm going to mix and let it thicken up. And if we need to add more, we'll add more. There's no water this time around. It's basically just adding. It's making it like a, a filler consistency. If I lift it up, you can see, look, the paint's no longer runny. It's kind of quite sloppy. I'm going to add a little bit more. I want it to be really thick because this is what's going to add the texture to the piece. So if you've got a smooth finish, the texture is what we need to help this verdigris look. This is lovely, lovely and thick. Can we see? Look. If I show you like that, it's falling. It does thicken up over time as well. So there we go. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to go back for my chip brush. You wouldn't want to use your best painting brush. I'm using a chip brush um, with natural bristles. And all I'm going to do is dip into the paste and we're just going with a stipple motion. So this is adding the texture to the piece. Also what I might add is this plastic container had a, a, a weld line running through the piece where the two parts of plastic was pushed together. So this is really great for hiding those details on the plastic pot. So all we're doing over the top, a little bit of paint. What also you might want to do to add different colours, um, you can pick up some graphite on its own and it changes the colour so you can add a little patchy can you see I'm picking up from the lid there I'm adding different tones so that's quite fun so you can mix your colors so I'm just picking up a little bit of that color back into that 
So it's adding a patchy. This is the bronze look that we want to go for. So the bronze um, finish will shine through the other colours at the end. It'll all make sense as we go through. So texture, 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 stippling away the whole piece. There's no rhyme or reason how I'm doing this. I'm just literally, the more your brush gets um, uh, stabbed at the end, the more texture it creates in the brush. So you might want to keep a brush, especially for this. It's good exercise as well, this. Have fun. So normally the salt wash texture, we, you could use this with a, a, a pale colour, um, with another colour over the top and you would sand back to reveal the underneath colour. But this, in this um, tutorial we're doing it a little bit different. You'll see we're, we're going to add the washes of colour and they're going to just seamlessly sit over the top. We're not going to be doing any sanding back with the salt wash. We're going to use it slightly different. This is just a texturizing medium at the moment. Pick up another bit of color. More graphite at the bottom. As we go all the way around. That is about it with the texturizing of the pot. As you can see, it now is um, taking on the look of concrete almost. It's got that sort of texture. It's less plasticky, less shiny, um, and more natural looking. We're gonna put this to one side again. We're gonna allow it to uh, dry off. This might take a little longer because there's more product there but we will as I promised we'll keep on working on the flat piece as we go along so back to the board and this is where we're going to add texture to the board so this was a flat piece of board so you can see maybe you can see I'm adding it's difficult in the light textures to the board with the bristles so this is also hiding the grain of wood, which is great. Little lumps and bumps, that's what we want. And the great thing about this, as it dries, if you go back and add a bit more, it kind of picks up more textures and it really is a lovely product to work with. This is almost dry, so we're going to work on this first before that. This is a good practice run, I suppose. Um, and we're going to talk about um, colours that make verdigris. Um, and also, at this point, if you want to go for a zinc look, a good combination to use at this point would be um, Annie Sloan Louis Blue uh, with a, maybe a touch of Old Violet. So uh, exactly over this tone, if you put uh, a wash over the top of this and allow it to drain through, you're going to get a zinc-like finish. Um, but we're not doing that today, we're doing verdigris, but that's just another option um, to get that zinc look. So all of the colours in Annie's range, number one, you could just, if you want to use one colour, a great colour to use would be duck egg. So that's one combination. Also, if you look at verdigris, um, Amsterdam green, the, the deep greens in the deep part of the verdigris, we're going to use this as our first coat. And also um, Provence and um, Florence as a darker green. So I think we're going to go um, Amsterdam, Provence and a touch of um, Florence and maybe we'll just put the odd little bit of old white in there. I don't know, we'll see as the project uh, moves forward. So all we're gonna do for this part, um, normally you wouldn't mix these all up in one go. Um, I'm just gonna do it so I've got them to hand and ready. I've got some little bowls and we're gonna just basically, each color, 
we're going to pour a little bit of each colour into the, these are old cans as you can see so there's just little bits left these are the cans that I use um, when I'm mixing colours a lot of the time so I'm not worried too much about contaminating the colours there's a little bit of paint there that's the um, Provence um, let's get the Amsterdam green a bit of Amsterdam green in there in the white bowls you can see the colours they look great pack them away I'm not gonna I don't think I'm gonna go with the duck egg we're gonna stick with these colours uh, Florence another gorgeous sort of verdigris sort of colour not as much as that I don't think and we're gonna have a little bit of old white to hand so only a little bit of old white there we go a little blob of old white that's that and what we're going to need oh water so we're going to need a mix stick again and each one of these i'm going to basically add just a touch of water just to loosen the paint you can see not too much i would say about 20% um, water to the paint just to loosen the paint you can see in there it's making it more fluent it needs to be more fluent for this process so it's still got lots of pigment and the paint if you look it's just dripping off the stick there it needs to be mixed really good and proper like so and I'll do the same for all of the colors and then we'll be ready To work move them out of the way so you can see I've got these runny runny tones and all that's gonna happen now I've got two spray bottles a posh one that you can see is well used this one is actually kitchen products so I basically removed the labels but the, this had some window cleaning product in it so if you haven't got one it's got a nice fine mist and this is perfect for the job um, and all we're going to do is we're going to mist the board and I'm going to use small brushes here I think just pick up a couple of brushes and we're going to basically mist the board saturate the, the board and this is what we're going to do on the Grecian urn as well and then we're going to pick up which colors are we going to go with? we're going to go with this is I think this is the Florence so I'm going to pick up a bit of Florence and we're just going to dab it here. Um, clean my brush in there. And we're going to go for, we'll go Amsterdam Green here. We're going to do them in a line. That's the Provence. We'll do more of the Provence. Seems that's the colour I'm going to use more of. And then we're just going to spritz these and all that we're going to do is allow this to travel so this is what we're going to do on the urn as you can see you might see in the close-up now the texture in the paint you can see why we've added the texture so it's just picking up sort of different lumps and bumps and with the layers of the color that we're going to do over the Grecian urn it's going to really show up lovely so that will give you an idea of why we put the texture in. I'm going to put this, set this to one side, we're going to leave this to dry and we're going to move on to the Grecian end. So now time for the fun bit. The urn is all dry, it's got a nice crunchy texture to it so I'm happy. And what we're going to do is I've got this little aluminium foil tray you could use any tray because I want to catch this is a baking tray actually but I want to catch any of the uh, the water that might spritz down and we're just gonna go with the same color combination as we did before but we're gonna go with um, Amsterdam green first I'm not gonna do everywhere I'm just gonna do in random areas we must spritz down first so I'm going to give it a good old spritz all the way around, saturate the whole piece 
like so. This will help the paint move on top of the salt wash. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to use, I'm using a big brush, but any old brush. And I'm going to pick up some of our washy, our washy um, Amsterdam green. And I'm just going to stipple it on. I'm going to push it under here. I'm not going to do everything, I'm just going to do some random areas, mainly underneath, a little bit on the top. Like so. And then we're going to use plenty of moisture again to move that paint about. And this should send it south. That's where we want it to, to, to go. Head, everything needs to head down. As you can probably see on the camera, it's all heading down. And I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave this to dry just a little bit. I'm, I'm not gonna let it all come out, all of the moisture come out, but just gonna let this set in just for a few moments, about five more minutes, and then we'll move on to the second, second color. So just to speed things up, I've used a hairdryer. Um, be careful because there's a lot of moisture in here. You don't want to mix um, electronics with um, water. Also, I've done a, a nice circular motion at a distance with the hairdryer because the, the wet paint will be uh, in all the crevices and you don't want to blast that out. That's what you want to keep because that's going to add to this look at the end. So just literally circular motions with your hairdryer Take your time over this. You could do this outside in the garden, which is, you know, in a good sunny day, it'll dry very quickly. Um, uh, make sure you cover your, your lawn up or whatever. You don't want a big puddle of green on your lawn. But yeah, generally, if you're gonna dry inside with a hairdryer, just take large circular motions. Um, but for now, we're gonna move on. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next color, which is, I'm gonna use Provence. And we're gonna use lots of Provence here. And the reason I really wanted this to be totally dry is that these two colours, I want them to be slightly away from each other. So each colour combination you can dry in between, um, but I think from here I'm just going to have lots of fun layering lots of tone on. So we might jump from one colour to another, but we're going to put lots of paint on it now. So I'm going to pick up, we're going to go with um, Provence, and I'm going to go quite heavy. We're just going to get this on, um, lots of it on. Have fun. I want it to be all in these crevices because I want it to trickle down. So you can overlap everything, maybe under here. So plenty on all over. If you notice, I'm tapping it in again. I'm just tapping the paint on. And I might pick up a little bit of the Florence here and there, just as a different tone. Back to the Provence. I'm working quite quickly. I'm tucking under most of the edges and this top edge. So I'm finding where the detail is and then applying the paint there. So stipple, stipple, stipple. And then what we're going to do is saturate again with water. And this is where we're going to have to move the paint around a little bit. Lots of water. Allow it to all head south. So there's a place here where I'm not keen on, so I'm just going to tap that in. This is a dry brush I've picked up now. You could also pick up uh, a good a tool at this point is a sponge because that'll add nice textures. So sponge, grab anything to hand that you think is going to add nice textures. So let's square that up. There we go. So keep on working, pushing the paint. So here's a good area to look from where I've tapped the brush. I want to soften those edges. So I'm just going to do that, then go back and allow it to travel. I do want some of the dark stuff to shine through because that's the bronze color underneath. Um, 
and just keep on working it. So that needs softening a bit down here, a bit at the top. Generally, just keep on working around the piece until you feel it's good. And come around to the front. As you can see, it's all heading south, it's exactly how I wanted it to, to look. More water will make the paint translucent, so don't over uh, spritz it, um, because otherwise you're going to lose some of your paint coverage. So, just literally, we want it to come off at the top edges and sit deep down, so if you can see, look, if I do that, it, it brings it back to the on fleur graphite mix which is the bronze colour underneath so I kind of like that what I would suggest you do when you're doing this is do one wash and then let it dry see how good that is and you can go back once it's dry you can go back and add more tone I quite like this though I'm quite happy with how it's looking this sponge is great it's just removing enough for me here again Here's a, an edge that I don't quite like. It's quite harsh. So you could either tap it away with a brush, like that, and then soften again. That works really lovely. I could do with some more under here. Let's pick up some more. That just feels like it needs a bit more colour. Travel it up there. And spritz again. A bit down here. And then it feels to me like I want to bring some of the, the dark back. So just play with it, really. It's a really playful project. Um, you'll find your own way of doing this and your own combination of colours. Duck egg alone looks amazing, but I like the really deep greens. They just seem to me to look more like bronze, cast bronze that's gone in the weather, in the elements. So just keep on working. I might, as a bit of a wild card, I've got a little brush here. Let's see what happens if we add a little bit of white here and there. It might work, it might not, but I'm not going to worry about it if it doesn't. Quite nice. It just adds another softer look. So sometimes you get those sort of white marks. I think that works quite well. there we go so I'm gonna leave this dry and then we can have a good look of what we've got and then I'm gonna see if I need to apply another layer so we're gonna give it a good 15 to 20 minutes drying time and then come back and see how we feel about it so here we have it it's all dried and not very often do I get to this point and don't choose to do it again. It absolutely has come out fabulously well. And as you can see, I've been simultaneously working on the second one. So that's there drying. And all that's left to talk about is finish. Now, the finish has got to do with where the item is going to be. Um, these, for me, are coming home and they're going in my entrance porch. So I've chosen to wax them. If there was to go outdoors uh, with the chalk paint on, I would not put any finish on them. I would just let them naturally weather even more at this stage. Um, or the, although you could use um, a lacquer or a, a varnish, a, a yacht varnish would really seal the painting quite well, but you would get a shiny finish. So I am going to wax them um, because they're going to be slightly covered. So all, I'm, all that's left to do is use a, a large wax brush and this actually by waxing is going to br bring out the tones in the um, in the patina so it really does and it'll also bring the surface the bronzy color to the surface which is really nice this is why i wanted to wax mine um, i really think it makes the end product look all the more better so just i'm not going to buff this i'm not going to go to a sheen i'm just going to make sure there's plenty on and allow it as you can see can you see in the camera it's really bringing out that lovely bronzy tone underneath uh, with the verdigris over the top 
and basically the choice of finish is yours for whatever you want to use your um, pots. This could also be done on some of your um, old light fitments, any old metal pieces um, would be lovely. It doesn't have to be plastic garden pots. It could be on many things, old light fitments, um, you know, just upcycle, choose, choose the item you want to go with. So I'm going to carry on with this process. We probably will photograph these outdoors so you can see the colours really nicely. But for now, thank you for joining me. Take care. So I could not be happier with the end result to this pot. As you can see, it looks really heavy, but it's not, it's just plastic. And if you want to try, challenge yourself and do different colours, um, this piece behind me was done in exactly the same way. There was just a little bit of Barcelona orange, Arles, and some Primer Red deep beneath the first layer. So you can create any sort of pattern that you really like in this fashion. So go, go and try it yourself, and I hope you enjoyed it.